All right, look. Coming off my first reaction to Slipknot, I am baring my teeth, crossing my fingers, and just bracing myself for the storm. Um, this is Psychosocial, official music video. <sighs> I'm excited, man. Musically, they fire. They fire. And I saw in the comment section after me doing my research and finding out more about, you know, how they get blamed for certain acts of people and people blame murders and crime on them. Like, I definitely don't support that in any way, shape, or form. Music is music. Allow people that creative space to create. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's uh, I really don't like that. And I could tell this song in particular, Psychosocial, it might be one of those songs that, you know, give me some insight to, to how they could motivate somebody to do something. But I'm, I'm basing it off the title. And even still, let artists create how they want to create. That's it. Um, I'm excited though. I'm excited. I don't think a, a title has uh, excited me this much since Radiohead Creep. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. We'll do song research afterwards. But um, yeah, let's let's not let's not let's not waste no time. Let's go. All right, so real quick, and I don't remember them saying anything about the mask. Um, maybe I missed it, but what is what is the significance of the mask? Like, is it just like, like I, I, I'm I genuinely want to know like what is it about the mask? image and identities uh the members perform perform uh, wearing unique individual face masks matching uniforms typical jumpsuits um while each member is typically assigned and referred to by a number based on their role in the band number zero through eight although the latter practice has diminished following the death of Paul Gray. The band has said the idea of wearing masks stemmed from a clown mask that Kron, Kron took to rehearsals when the band first started. Kron later became known for his clown mask adopting... I don't even know that word, but something clown. The concept developed by late 1997, the band decided every band member would wear a unique mask and matching jumpsuit. Uh, Taylor said in 2002, it's our way of becoming more intimate with the music. It's a way for us to become unconscious of who we are and what we do outside of the music. Okay, so basically like her, like the artist 
her. I'm, I'm sure a good amount of y'all probably won't know who she is, but she's a, uh, a R&B artist of today. Um, and her disguise was glasses and her hair kind of like covering her face. And the whole premise was she wanted people to just really embrace her music and not worry about who she was. So I like that. I do like that. Um, it, it, it truly shows that um, you're about the music and about genuinely how the music feels. Because, of course, if can't nobody really see your face. You know, you could be the biggest artist in the world, but if nobody's seeing your face, it's like, how can you really garner fame um, from it? So clearly they're not interested in fame. They're not interested in being noticed. It's solely about the music, which is, I, I commend that. That's amazing. That's dope. This is madness. So, for one, the composition of this song is fire. This part, like, everything leading up to this part, the singing, the screaming, the drumming. So, y'all told me that when a drummer does that real, like, real, like, when it's real, real quick, it's called double pedaling. When you use both feet on the um bass drum I, I i hope i'm referring to the right thing but whatever that is that produces that quick drumming sound is like that is crazy like you being able to like move your foot and your hands in coordination that fast that's not normal i don't think like I'm one of those people that could barely chew gum and walk. That's crazy. That's one. Two, the visuals for this, fire. The quick cuts, that fire pit with the star in the middle. I don't know what that's supposed to represent. That's crazy. Uh, just in the two videos that I've seen from Slipknot, visually, they are by far one of the more impressive bands. Um, it's so much going on, but it's so much imagery and so much like 
just so much stuff to pick up while you try to I'm like I'm not I'm not even going front. I'm missing a lot of the lyrics because I'm just jamming so hard and I'm trying to keep up with the with the video. But again, composition wise, the way this song is just maneuvering through different beats and different sounds. And that solo, that guitar solo is pretty impressive as well. It's a great song. I like it so far. Yo, their music is meant for straight mosh pits. I could only imagine the mosh pits that are created from their music. I mean, this is straight up head banging, balls to the wall run somebody over music this is not music you should listen to driving at all but boy does it sound good listen i can't get enough for that double pet whatever that is that is really impressive and i know it, i think it's more um normalized in today's rock music but that's just impressive, man. Like, and 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 the vocal sync. What's my man's name again? What's my lead singer's name again? Sean. Is that Sean? No. Uh, vocals, 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 vocals. Stop showing me the vo Okay, hold on. Let me go. Let me do this. Let me go to the song. Oh, this came out in 2009. Psychosocial um, released as the second single from the band's fourth stu uh, studio album, All Hope Is Gone. The song entered airplay on June 26, 2008. And was originally planned for release as a digital single on July 1st. But was uh, delayed and released on July 8th. Oh wow, the song was on the soundtrack to Marvel's Punisher Warzone. Never seen that. Um, released on Roadrunner Records. Uh, Corey, Corey Taylor, Corey, Corey, vocally, his range, again, that fry, roar, that voice, and then you mix in his actual singing that he did in between, that's very impressive, very impressive, and I saw a couple people in the comment section say, yo, 
Corey can sing. Like, for real, for real. So, I definitely want to give him his flowers. He definitely can sing. And again, I just, I think because of the, the style of the music, it just, people, I, I don't know why, but I would think people would assume, like, these guys probably aren't the greatest singers. I personally think the range of Corey is by far one of the best. Like, no, is it up there with, like, Chester Bennington? At least from what I've heard so far, no. But it's very impressive. It's very impressive. Slipknot, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. And again, visually, it's so all over the place. So as opposed to the first video where they just trashed a fan's house, and I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for telling me the true the true story behind that music video. I was genuinely joking. So the fact that I kind of got it right on the nose is crazy. But that's crazy. The fact that a fan allowed them to just trash their house for like that definitely seemed like the house was like gone. Like they literally destroyed it. So I'm going to assume that fan was rich and uh, had some more money to build another home or buy another home. But that's crazy. But this video in like a cornfield, farm, the fire, the mask, the edits, whatever that was that they put on the drums that like looked like salt exploded into the air. I, like visually, their music videos is it, just madness. It's madness. Their music is madness, but it sounds good. It really, really does. It sounds harsh and just brutal. And, you know, I'm definitely going to believe that that's the feeling that they want to uh, portray. And,. This is definitely that music I could tell for a certain demographic. This is just to get all of your, just all of that negative energy out. And that's good. That's great. Music that serves a purpose, regardless of what purpose it serves. And again, not to kill people, not to hurt people, but just a self-expression like that. I'll, I'll, I'll rock with it. I rock with it. Me. I do. How did this song do commercially? Y'all really requested this, so I'm going to assume this song nominated for a Grammy. Okay, it was nominated for a Grammy. Uh, they don't have the certifications for here in the States, but two times platinum in Canada, gold in UK. Gold in Portugal. That's dope. That's dope. The video was directed by Paul Brown. Using high-end cameras which shoot 1,000 frames per second. And contrasted with traditional 35 mm hand crank camera equipment. Oh, and it was nominated for a VMA, Best Rock Video. That's amazing. Shout out to Slipknot, man. I'm rocking with you. All that negative stuff about their music, inciting or encouraging violence. I've yet to hear it. I've yet to hear it. Now, oh, matter of fact, let me just look at the lyrics real quick. The first song, I remember reading the uh, lyrics, and I don't remember it giving me an inciting feel. It definitely talked about some harsh things, but inciting violence, no. I did my time. I won out. So infusive fade. It doesn't cut. 
The soul is so vibrant. The reckoning, the sickening, packaging subversion. Go Go dig your graves. Then fill your mouth with all the money you will save. And the rain will kill us all, throw ourselves against the wall. But no one else can see the preservation of martyr in me. The secrets have gone mad. This is nothing new. But when we killed it all, the hate was all we had. Again, the limits of the dead, the limits of the dead. Again, I I don't see anything inciting anything. Yeah, I I I don't see I don't see inciting violence, you know, again, some very harsh lyrics. Very sad. But Like I'm sitting here looking at the the first the first couple of lines. I did my time, I went out. So infusive fade. It doesn't cut, the soul is not vibrant. The reckoning and the sickening. It sounds like somebody's that's just just upset with the world. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you want bad things to happen. You're just in pain. At least that's how I'm taking note those first couple of lines. The soul is not so vibrant. Like when I read that, the soul is not so vibrant. So basically people uh, perpetrating to be, you know, happy and vibrant and smiling. And, you know, that's not really what it is. Um, go deal. Go drill. Go drill your your deserts. Go dig your graves. Then fill your mouth with all the money you'll save. I see. I don't. I don't know what that could mean. But again, it just sounds like somebody that's just upset and wishes certain things. And maybe certain people will go away, but not inciting anything. Just wants we just want people to leave them alone. Sinking in, getting smaller again. I'm done. It has begun. I'm not the only one. Okay, so sinking in, getting smaller again. I'm going to assume that's just how he feels as a person. Like, he's losing who he is as a person. I'm done. It has begun. I'm not the only one. So, saying that it's more it's more people that feel this way and feel the same way of just wanting things to change and just... Feel, I, I just don't get inciting violence when I hear that music. I really don't. I really don't. Call me crazy. But, yeah. If I'm missing it, y'all, and, and y'all let me know with Nine Inch Nails. Like, it was certain things about the Nine Inch Nail uh, Closer song where I was like, I don't think that me and some of y'all were like, no, that's exactly what they're saying. So if I'm missing it, y'all let me know. But I, I don't I don't get inciting violence when I hear them. I hear pain. I hear hurt. I hear a very disturbed person, but not a violent encourager. Not that. That's not what I get. But I could be completely wrong. So y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, with Slipknot, peace.